That is good. All the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to just start off tonight by going ahead and reading through the whole psalm. And then I'll come back and um, talk about that. The little title that they have at the beginning of this in the Bible I'm looking at says, um, The Lord Upholds My Life. It's one of the key parts of it. And I believe it really speaks to us to remember that God always has us. The Lord has us. When we trust Him, when we live trusting Him, He's got us. It says, To the choir master with stringed instruments. <laughs> Acoustic, yeah. <clears throat> A masculine of David when the Zephites went and told Saul, Is not David hiding among us? Verse 1, O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Selah. Verse 4, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. In verse 6, With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. And finally, for he has delivered me from every trouble. Can you say amen? And my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Thank you for your this psalm. Lord, help it minister to our lives, to our edification, to our uh, bringing forth wisdom in our own walk, remembrance of our, to keep our trust in you at all times. We thank you again for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. We often sing, God, you are way maker. How's that go? Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Well, that's a song David would feel confident joining us in singing. In 1 Samuel 23, the backstory for this psalm, verses 19 and 20, the Ziphites conspire with Saul against David, betraying his location. Then the Ziphites went up to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horsh? On the hill Machala, which is south of Jeshimon. Now come down, O king, according to all your heart's desire to come down, and our part shall be to surrender him into the king's hand. I wonder what their motivation was. Probably wouldn't get on the good side of King Saul. Well, here David is overwhelmed by the conspiracy of foreigners along with his own countrymen against his life. And so he calls out to God to save him. He pleads for God to take up his cause against the action of evil men. Verses 1 through 3 again says, O oh God, save me by your name. Vindicate me by your might. O oh God, hear my prayer and give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. They do not set God before themselves. 
they follow their own desires. They put their own whatever motivations before the Lord. Though you may feel forced to flee for your life, to run, God always has your back. God always has your back. The name of the Lord, remember the verse, is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and are saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. First Samuel 23, 22, verses 22 through 23, Saul commands the Ziphites to spy out and confirm David's locale and, move, and movements, and then to return to him with the intel. Do you ever feel paranoid like people are out to get you? <laughs> well, sometimes it's natural, but... We can't let that dictate our actions. But anyway, Saul said, Go make yet more sure. Know and see the place where his foot is, and who has seen him there. For it is told me that he is very cunning. See therefore and take note of all the lurking places where he hides. <laughs> And come back with, to me with the sure information. Then I will go with you. And if he is in the land, I will search him out among the thousands of, of Judah. But David expresses his faith in God as his advocate and judge. He had to know there were enemies all around him. But God was his advocate. It doesn't matter. If God, if God is your advocate, you're on solid foundation. He's your defender. And David knew that he would turn the enemy's plans against them because he's faithful. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Now, he didn't know how he would do it. And like, you know, we didn't, we. We never really know how God's going to do that. But he is faithful, so we trust him. Verses 4 through 5 says, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will, he will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. So though you may feel surrounded, enemies on every side, you got to see the bigger picture because God always makes a way for his people. He always makes a way for you. Walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. If we were to walk by sight, We'd be constantly doing this. Oh, Lord, and sometimes we may be guilty of doing that until we come to our senses. 1 Samuel 23, 25 through 28, Saul tracks David down using the intel from the Ziphites. And he is in the midst of pursuit when something happens. And Saul and his men went to seek him, and David was told, so he went down to the rock and lived in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that he heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. He tracking him down. Saul went on one side of the mountain, and David was hurrying. I was on the other side of the mountain, and he was hurrying to get away from Saul. As Saul and his men were closing in on David, on David and his men to capture them, a messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have made a raid against the land. Oops. So Saul returned from pursuing after David, 
and went against the Philistines. Therefore that place was called the Rock of Escape. Now, when God comes through, you know, we're not supposed to be surprised, but we are a lot of times, right? And David must have been overwhelmed with joy to suddenly see the ones who, who sought his life just kind of melt away in the distance, <laughs> oh, in the opposite direction. So he sacrifices an offering to God with praise and thanksgiving to the God of his deliverance. Praise God. Verses 6 through 7, with a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. <laughs> for he has delivered me from every trouble. And my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Now, free will offerings are actually are voluntary. They're not offered out of guilt, duty, or coercion. They're offered freely of your own will. Celebrate God's faithfulness and the spontaneity of gladness when he comes through for you. Rejoice in that moment. <laughs> I know it's so real, it's such a relief. Sometimes we're just like, thank God for that. But we need to really rejoice. And, you know, sometimes he comes through for us, not like in an instant, but over time. We still need to celebrate. He's coming through for me right now. He's been coming through for me for three years, over three years, and it's still going. And I have to remind myself sometimes, yes, I do. <laughs> but we need to, yeah, so we need to celebrate it. His faithfulness in the spontaneity of gladness by exalting his name and spreading his fame in song and testimony. God is always worthy of our highest praise. He's always worthy. I, rem I'm, uh, I remember Psalm 68, 1 through 3, which says, Let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Praise the Lord. Let God arise. Let him be your way maker, your miracle worker. For he's our promise keeper. He's our light in the darkness. That is our God. That is who he is. That is who you are. And we give you praise and glory tonight for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And amen.